I always advocate for a multiplex testing, and if possible, I would recommend next generation sequencing approaches. And the main reason is not only do you get a broad number of markers in that panel, but you can also identify rare mutations that don't necessarily show up on all hotspots analyses. So in my mind, you should always be looking first to do a next generation sequencing approach. So the question becomes, when is it feasible not to do that? When is it necessary not to have an expansive analysis? And several situations occur to me. So first of all, when uh, there's insufficient time for the patient, it's really urgent that they start treatment. You may want to do uh, some rapid analysis, something with a one or two day turnaround time, EGFR plus ALK, for instance, uh, so that you can get the patient on the appropriate therapy fast. Uh, if you have a positive identification in that case, that's great. But if you don't, I think it's really incumbent upon the team to go back and perform that multiplex analysis to look for the rare markers and see if there's some additional options for that patient. The most common mutations in EGFR are the exon 19 deletion, which is actually a whole family of different deletions, but they serve the same purpose in activating EGFR, and the L858R point mutation in exon 21. Uh, after that, the third most common type of mutation is actually an exon 20 insertion. Uh, and these typically do not respond to current EGFR inhibitors. Beyond that is a whole suite of very rare EGFR mutations, many of which are perfectly responsive to erlotinib or gefitinib or afatinib. And that's one of the reasons why I advocate for a next generation of sequencing approach is to identify these rare mutations that uh, could benefit from treatment. Collectively, they represent at least 10% of the population. I would recommend that in uh, squamous cell carcinoma, PDL1 is always conducted. In adenocarcinoma, you should do PDL1, but it's secondary to molecular marker analysis. It's more important for the patient to determine whether they have an EGFR. Uh, an ALK, a RET, a ROS, a BRAF mutation, uh, one of the MET abnormalities, uh, than it is to have uh, PDL1. You should do both. In an ideal world, you will do both molecular analysis for mutations and PDL1 expression in adenocarcinoma. However, patients do not seem to benefit from immune oncology uh, as well if they have, if they are positive for an EGFR mutation or an ALK mutation. The level of benefit for these patients is considerably lower, and so it really serves the patient's best interest to put them on an EGFR inhibitor if they have an EGFR mutation, long before you'd even consider immune oncology. So the sequence of testing, once you've determined histology, in adenocarcinoma should be uh, molecular marker analysis and then pdl one If you can do it all in one fell swoop, that's perfect.